Welcome back. We are here with four powerhouse women who have come together on this project, Moments That Matter. We have Kate Butler, who is the publisher and the creator of the Inspired Impact series, book series. We have Erin Saxton, who is an author and a an author in the book, also a media strategist and former TV producer with Barbara Walters and The View, and Patty Aubrey, who is the former head of business for The Chicken Soup for the Soul uh, titles and companies, and now has her own companies that she will tell us about as well. But in the meantime, I am going to start this round with you, Kate, because we want to know what inspired you to now inspire us with moments that matter. Thank you so much. So, um, you know, the title moments that matter came to me in a time when I was being interviewed a lot. Um, and the interview questions always would bring me and the other people um, in the media series down to these pivotal moments in our life. And it was these defining moments that we could thread through that really changed the trajectory for us. It really got us to the point where, um, you know, we could look back and pinpoint that exact moment that you've really shifted everything. And I thought, I want to know more about these moments for people. There's so much learning that comes from these moments or so much inspiration that comes from these moments. Um, and that's really where the title and the book came from, opening it up to people to step forward and say, like, I, you know, yes, I've had one of those big moments in my life. Some, some of the stories, as you know, are big moments. Others are small moments along the way, but nonetheless, moments that matter and really changed our life in a very significant way. And so that's really the premise of the book and where that, that title and that book came from. And so you have 20 authors who come together. You coordinated under the rooftop of a fabulous message. I am a giant supporter of a great title. Again, we talked earlier that, you know, a title like Moments That Matter, you could probably give me a blank journal with that cover and inspire me to move forward and write my own book inside. But your whole premise with these book series is to help to heal and to inspire. So how do you then select the people who participate? Because I'm thinking, you know, of the people who are watching us right now, this is a new concept. They, I'm sure everyone has a story and many have more than one that they would like to share, but maybe haven't thought about contributing to a collective that actually focuses on a particular topic. You know, it's such a great way to begin authorship. Uh, you know, there's a, a very common study out there that 80% of Americans uh, have really have a dream and a, and a wish and a desire to write a book. Um, and less than 10% of them ever end up writing their book. And of the people who end up writing the book, um, only... 5% of those people end up publishing it and only 1% of those people end up ever becoming a bestseller. So it's really interesting when you look at those stats, you go, wow, all those people, you know, would want to become a published author if they had the opportunity. Right. Um, and so it's a really great way to share your story, uh, do it in a way that's digestible. We walk you through the process. We're together for six months and we talk about, you know, getting into the story, as you mentioned, um, really the, the selection process is, is your story here to help you? or inspire someone else, right? Let's talk about your story. Does it fit in with our audience? Is the reader going to gain value? And then if everything aligns, um, you know, we walk you through this process for six months and at the end, you know, we've done it with you. We've done uh, some of the process for you, but you get the feel of it all of becoming an author, you know, and you get the story out to the masses. Our books are distributed worldwide. Um, and so now you have this message and this story that gets delivered globally. It's, it's a really beautiful uh, way for you to begin. And I always say you get bitten by the book bug after that, because once you publish one book and yeah, that's it, it opens up the floodgates. And then a lot of people then go on to either contribute again, or write their own books. Some get into children's books. So it's a really, really beautiful opening for people. That's amazing. And I love the, I'm, I'm very, I'm very much a lover of short stories. So I love something that I can read. If I can take away a lesson or an aha moment in three or four pages, then you've totally got me. And I love having these kinds of books all over the house for myself, for my guests, for whomever. So thank you so much for doing that. And Bella, 
So this is actually your third book. And yes. so let's talk about that. You're you're recently now going into the eighth grade. You guys are coming to us from Ireland where you're on book tour, but your chapter in this book is very different than what you've done before. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my book chapter is about my seventh grade year and it starts with the first day of school. I was the new kid, which has happened before a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the first few days of school, like no one talked to me and I didn't talk to anyone. They all had their own friend groups. They all talked to each other. And it wasn't like they were excluding me, but uh, I was kind of being excluded. <laughs> so finally, like one day we're packing up it's after the first, definitely after the first day of school. Uh, we're a few days in and we're all packing up and this one girl turns around she's sitting in front of me and she goes hi welcome to the school and it was just such a beautiful moment because it was just it was the tiniest act of kindness she said hi to me that was pretty much it but it opened the doors for the rest of the school year and I started talking to other people and once the everyone started joining clubs and everything one girl said to me, like, you know, you should join student council with us. Like, you know, that would be awesome. We would have so much fun. I'm like, okay, sure. Why not? And we had to give a speech in front of the entire school. And I was running for treasurer. And there was only one other person running against me. But he was in eighth grade. He had been at the school for multiple years. I was this new kid. I didn't really know anyone. And I gave my speech. And then all of a sudden, my name was announced on the loudspeakers. And I was screaming. I screamed in class. And everyone thought I was this quiet, shy girl. And the seventh and eighth graders are on the second floor of the school. My sister in fifth grade could hear me screaming because <laughs> I was so excited. I wasn't expecting it. I was telling myself, like, you know, we have fun. I had fun joining, giving my speech. And um, people who ran were allowed to still help with the student council. So I was like, yeah, that'll be fun. I can still do that. And um, I was the new student council treasurer. It was my first week or two of school and I I did it. And the rest of the school year, because that had happened, because the one girl had said hi, I other like other friends encouraged me to join clubs with them. And I became like just it it was so amazing to be able to join these clubs and they really like next year, I know I'm going to rejoin some of them. And I just made so many amazing memories in these clubs. And I just became like a whole different person than that first, that girl on the first day of school who didn't talk to anyone. And by the end of that year, you actually had quite a list of participation in all the clubs and all the groups, the things that you did, that one random act of kindness. Does it make you think now differently about when you step into a situation where someone is maybe new, are you the person who steps up and greets them to kind of open the door? Yes, I definitely always try to, because I know how big of a deal that can be, even if it doesn't seem like that to you. It doesn't seem like it, but it's a great reminder to all of us. And it's not only in the seventh and eighth grade that that's powerful. That stuff is powerful through all of our lives. So thank you for sharing that story. And I know our viewers, when they read the book, are actually going to be inspired by your story. So thank you for sharing. And Patty, I'm going to move over to you and tell me you wrote the forward for this book and you've also got books of your own. So share a little bit about that. Well, I wrote the forward because I, I believe just like what Bella was talking about, it is those moments that matter. It is those moments that, you know, you, almost if you think about it, the, you know, the moments where you have that intuitive thought, I should call this person or I should do this. And when you follow those intuitive thoughts, really interesting things happen. And so often we're so busy that we forget who's in the room. We forget about anything else where we get self-absorbed into whatever's going on for us. And so I was really excited about this because one of the things I tell all the women that I work with is make a timeline of every single thing you've done, every moment that mattered in your life from the time that you graduated kindergarten, you got your driver's license, because we so often tend to discount how much we've gone through. And when you look at how did you feel right before this breakthrough. Kate talked about that earlier, like each level and people say scared. And how did you feel after? I felt amazing. 
And so for me, I like to say to people, remember the feeling that you had and say, oh, I recognize this feeling. This is about, it's, it's almost, the, it's the feeling about a moment that's just about to matter. It's just one more for the books. And so if you can anchor that instead of, oh my gosh, I'm afraid to do this, or I'm afraid to speak up, or I'm afraid to ask for this, or whatever it is that's getting in your way. And if, if I asked any woman, what's the, the biggest obstacle, they would say myself, because most of us are in our heads and we create our own stories that keep us stuck. And so by, by really holding that space of getting, getting used to having that uncomfortable moment and just going, oh yeah, that's just me again and letting it go and moving forward. And is it scary? Yes, it is. But I always reframe it like, oh, this will be something I'll be talking about on stage someday. This is something that I'll be, you know, motivating somebody else that's one step below me to do the same thing. And so I felt it was really important to do that. And, and it really aligns with my message, which is all about giving women permission to show up and speak up and be seen, which is why I'm so proud of Bella to do it so young. So um, anyway, that's just my mission now. It's just to really support women to dream big, to go for it, to never give up and to have people around them that can cheerlead them on because so often we don't, we've been the cheerleaders and we don't actually have the cheerleaders. And so we need to surround ourselves with people that will uplift and support and help us go to the next level. That's absolutely true. And thank you for the work that you're doing. And Erin, I'm going to come back to you and have you bring it all together since you're the one who I'm so grateful to for bringing all of us together here today. But your chapter in the book is actually a lead in to a book that you're working on, which is called Chasing Pretty. And of course, from the world of image, I totally get that there is a whole big story behind that because to some degree, we could all plug in our own word, whether it's pretty or success or happy or whatever it is. But how did you get there? You know, so for me, I um, I could have what I could have majored in in college was gaining and losing the same 70 or 100 pounds. At first, it started with five pounds, then 15. I got really good at the 15. I nailed the gaining and losing the 25. Awesome at that. And then I got pregnant and I had miscarriages and my body just was like, oh, okay. Like it's a great day for a cheeseburger. And, you know, I don't know. I just kept eating my way back and forth and losing, gaining, losing, gaining. And, um, you know, in my career, I've always been pretty confident. Yet I was in the entertainment industry, fat thin or thinner. I don't think I've ever been thin, right? No one's ever blamed me for being like, you know, fit and in shape, maybe now, but that's at the end of the book. And so writing with Kate and, and, and Bella and Patty, this was my first chance to talk about something that, you know, I'm used to talking about everybody else. I'm used to telling everybody else's story, making them popular. So this is my lifting up my skirt a little bit. Um, and so I entitled my moment that matter chasing pretty, because if you were thinner than me, you were pretty because that meant you had your act together. You must know something. I don't know. I don't care if your face looked like it was made for radio, but if you were thin, you are able to do something that I can't do at least not for more than seven days. Cause then I just gain it all back. And that was so intriguing to me, but like. I'm being kind of irreverent and funny about it. It's a gut-wrenching yet hysterical story of my life, of what goes on inside this crazy head of mine. And so basically, it's my story of the moment that mattered for me was realizing why I was eating. Huge moment huge pivotal moment. And it's not like I figured it all out for everybody, but it's this autopilot moment of awareness that I finally figured it out. And I honestly, I will never be heavy again. Like I'm positive. So if I can help people just realize even they're not alone and they help, I got up to size 24 W in my life. I'm a size eight now. And do I have like crepey arms and do I need to work out? And do I still want cheeseburgers? Heck yeah. You know, it hasn't stopped, but I'm realizing now that through a moment that mattered, I I'm figuring this out and I'm, it's not defining me anymore. 
I'm also realizing that bad, yucky things happen to thin people. I wore a bikini this summer, which I thought everything would be perfect for you in your life if you could wear a bikini. That's like chunky girl thinking. The things that happened to me while I was wearing a bikini just this summer alone was mind blowing. Not good. Normal life. No, it's still normal life still happens in a bikini. Oh, and no. I uh, for I everyone. If so, you talk to a fatter person and you talk to them about, do you know that da 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 could happen if you're wearing a size four jeans? They won't believe you. I promise you. I think you're you know, right. You guys hear me who's listening. You know. Yeah. And we all know that it's like, it could be pretty. It could be successful. It could be happy. We all have that moment where we don't believe it until we see it happen to us. Ladies, thank you so much. I really want our viewers to be able to find you. So Kate, where can we find the book? Absolutely. So you can find the book at katebutlerbooks.com. Uh, it'll direct you to Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It's, it's available really anywhere where you're going to buy a book uh, worldwide. Also on our website for anybody who you mentioned may have a story that they desire to share. We have a bestseller blueprint right on our website that they can go ahead and download, takes them through the steps of how they can begin to write their story and actually take them through the steps of publishing their very own bestseller. And we offer that right there on our website. So um, there's lots of resources on there and along with the book, Moments That Matter. Excellent. We will share all that. Erin, where can people find you? I'm on social media. So follow me for fun videos on Facebook and Instagram, but theerinnetwork.com is where more information on all of this will exist. Perfect. And I know Patty is at pattyaubrey.com and she has a free download for us as well. She had to jump off and move on to her next program because we're all getting this done before coffee in the morning, right? <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for sharing with us. I so appreciate having you here. And I know our viewers are going to look forward to learning more and reading all the stories Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making the time. And to our viewers, we'll be right back.